Okay, so now you've learned how to create a regression model. You even know how to add in dummy codes and include categorical variables. Now it's time to go back a little bit, take a step back and make sure that what we're coming up with is completely valid. So there are five assumptions of running a linear regression that we have to uh, make sure we're meeting or more appropriate way to put it is find out how well we're meeting these assumptions. And this will help us put boundaries around our prediction. So uh, for each one of our independent variables that we came up with, uh, what are the values or ranges of values th that we consider, not that we consider that, that these tests we're about to perform tell us are valid ranges for our predictions? Because uh, some values we'll come up with, we um, are not well predicted from the model. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's just start with these. We have five of them. One at a time, let's begin with this first assumption, linear relationship. This assumption means that the spread of data of each of our cases of those x variable x variables against the y variable, uh, they're they're spread in a linear relationship. So let me show you exactly what that means. It's easiest to look at a scatter plot. Let's scroll back up in this chapter to where we talked about that, and give you some examples. Now see, right here. Okay, these dots. Although they're spread around this line of best fit, they generally are positive sloping. And the spread around, around this line is, for the most part, consistent, meaning it doesn't slope up. It doesn't slope down. It's not further out around here and then closer in the middle and then further out over here. Let me see if I can find a better uh, image to represent that um, right here. Okay, these dots. Yes, they're spread around the line, but generally they go in a very straight linear direction. So a one unit increase in X is generally going to result in a predictable increase in Y. And it's that increase is the same here from point zero to one as it is from point whatever this is to whatever this is out here. That's what I mean. Same thing in this one. The spread stays around a single line. It doesn't slope up. It doesn't slope down like a logarithmic. Um, if it sloped at an increase, it'd be like an exponential. Sometimes the dots can go up, then down, then back up in a polynomial fashion. So uh, this is very smooth data, and, and it meets that assumption of, uh, of a linear relationship. Even this data appears to, but we don't know for sure. So what we need to do is test and find out, is there a line other than a straight line that fits these dots better than a straight line does? In other words, um, if you understand this concept of a line of best fit, which is what these are, this line is the, at an angle that minimizes the sum of squared residuals, meaning the difference from each point to the line, whether it's above or below, uh, this is the angle that minimizes the distance of all those points from the line. Well, can we draw a curved line that will reduce that distance? That's the question we're asking. Is there a line other than a straight line that will make that, uh, that sum of squared residuals smaller? So... Uh, let's go back to where we were, and let me pull in, oops, sorry, all the way back to where we were. Here we are. And let's pull it uh, back up our results that we had previously. All right, here's our regression. Uh, I'll leave it right here. All right, here's how we're going to do this. Let's start just by plotting a, a few of these variables in a scatter plot against each other. Um, in particular, let's look at uh, purchase bike numeric always is the Y, and each one of these variables is an X. So I'm going to grab all of purchase bike numeric and all of, let's just start with income. So I'm going to hold down command or control, select the whole thing. Um, oops, sorry. This is just one way to do it. Uh, it's probably quicker ways of grabbing that. Then I want to insert a scatter plot. Let's put this, I'm going to cut it and just go um, somewhere over here with the rest of our stuff. Paste it right here. Okay, now purchase by numeric is only either a zero or one. Just looking at it, there's no way to tell uh, is there a line other than that uh, straight line that fits this. But here's how we find out. So uh, click on the chart and here under chart design, if you're on a PC, I think you can right click what we're looking for is add chart elements. So I think on a, on PC Excel, you can right click and add chart elements, but for me, it's right here. And I'm gonna go to uh, trend line 
Right now I've currently selected none. Let's add in linear. Okay, and it says here's your line. Um, I want to edit some things on this. So right click and go to format trend line. Okay, and we get these options over here. I want to display, uh, you can't see this. I wonder if I can scroll and move this up a bit. No. Nope. Um, see this other one that says display R squared value on chart there at the bottom? Check that one too. So those are both checked. So let me zoom in here, make this easier to see. So I've got, uh, let me move this up. I've got, all right, my slope. Now, don't be confused. It's just scientific notation when you see the E. Um, it's a very gentle slope, which is why this means it's a very small number, like 0 0.00000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.00000007. 0, 0, 7. Plus, this is my intercept. It crosses at 0. 0.44, which is right here. My R squared is 0. 0.0017. So I'm going to check and see uh, if there's anything better other than a straight line that gives me a higher R squared. That's what I'm looking at, my effect size. Does it get any bigger or better with a, something other than a linear trend line? So click back here on the trend line. And we have a few other options. Now logarithmic, This uh, there's a problem. Well, there's a limitation here. I can't have any zero values when I'm doing a logarithmic which means uh, I've got zeros right here, these Y values of purchase bike. So I could do a couple of things. I could change purchase bike numeric just for the sake of testing this logarithmic. I could change it from a zero one to a one two, but that's kind of dangerous because then it's implying some people purchase one bike, other people purchase two, and that's not really valid either. So instead, I'm just gonna test. Uh, the only one I'll test here is this polynomial. All right, so here's what it says. Uh, it added a squared term. See this order two that's set right here. And the squared term just takes my x value and squares it and I get two, basically two independent variables. It changes the location of my, um, my intercept. So remember this is y equals mx plus b form. So basically it's y equals m the slope of x squared plus m the slope of x plus intercept. But notice this, my r squared value has gone up. It, well, actually, no, let me check. Linear, yes, it was 0 0.0017 before, and now it's 0 0.00246. Uh, if I change this up, enter, it doesn't give me that option to, uh, whoops, let me come back here. I change this to a three. Let's see if I move off of it and then back on. No, oh, there we go. I have to use this thing. So, now look at my R squared, 0 0.0059. Does it get any higher? Up to six, up to eight. Now right about here, it's not increasing much. 0 0.00631, 0 00835, 0 00835, it's not getting any better. Basically it stops at six. So I'm gonna go back here to five where it seems or appears to stop within that range. So basically what this says is I've got a bunch of terms here uh, uh, to the 6th, 5th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd, and I can improve uh, that line of best fit. This is what we call this is it's, I'm relaxing that assumption of linearity. So this is a lot of variables, and I don't know if each one of these is a significant variable in indicating whether or not someone purchased a bike. So here's what I have to do. Uh, let's come back here to income. And I'm going to insert, and these numbers are going to get big. So uh, if I square income, it's going to become a huge number. So here's what I'm going to do, especially when I get to where I'm raising to the sixth. I'm going to start by saying income, uh, let's see, reduced. And let's say this equals this number divided by, let's take it way down. Uh, let's do 100,000. So I'm dealing with this. There we go. Uh, next, I'm going to work working off this number right here. Insert. I'm going to say this is income squared. Let's insert. Let's start by just income squared, income cubed. So I'm going to say this equals this cell squared. This equals... Um, but actually, what I'm losing here 
is because this is less than 0.1. I better, all right, hold on one second. I'm going to change something. Let's go ahead and make this one income right here, uh, cubed. Let me go back here and divide this only by 10,000 to keep these numbers because I think the smallest one is 10,000. That means my smallest number will be one. All right, let's start with these numbers right here. So let's do a new regression model like we did before. Data, data analysis, regression. My Y, is it still M? Nope, it is now P, purchased by numeric. Yeah, I'll just click over, start again. Purchased by numeric. There we go. And my X, for now, I'm just going to test only these, my new income column, and then my square to my cube terms. And let's output this somewhere else so I don't write over the top of my previous one. Let's put it down here. And OK. Summary output, I'm just going to give this one for income cubed, it goes up to. So my R squared value, here's that 0 0.059 like we had in that line of best fit. Remember, I'm not including all my other variables, so naturally this is going to be lower than my 9% up here. But what I'm trying to find out, though, is the p-value. So right here, income uh, by itself, 0 0.02, that's significant, 0 0.04, still significant, 0 0.06, by definition, not significant. However, that may start to become significant once I include all those other variables. So I'm going to go back here and actually go ahead and add another one in because I'm getting pretty good results on income cubed. Let's go ahead and add it to the fourth and say this raised to the four. Okay, let's go and analyze this. Regression, yep. Uh, still P, nope, it's not still P. Let's delete that. We're now looking at Q. Uh, this range, let's just redo that one again just to be safe. We're looking at this income reduced through income four. Okay. Uh, output range. Not X. Let's put it here in Y33, whatever that is. Okay. Here we are. So uh, R squared has gone up just like it did over here when we were playing with it with this line of best. Oh, there it is. When I added it over here, remember my R squared went up to about 6%. Same R squared right here. I also, just so you can see, this validates that it's all right that I, when I reduce income by a factor like 10,000, it doesn't mess with the actual relationship with uh, the dependent variable. But anyway, look what it's done here to my p-values. It's kind of screwed them all up. Income four is really high, and now these ones have all changed. That's normal. It's because income four is too highly correlated with the rest of these and it's messed up my p-values. So this tells me I should go back to my previous model and only include income squared and cubed. So now let's um, remove this one again. Delete, that one did me no good. Uh, data analysis regression. Uh, am I still in Q? Nope, I'm not. Purchase by numeric, X range. Um, so what I want to do now is uh, I, well, well, actually let's get our previous results back up real quick, just like we had before, just to make sure that we're all good. Uh, output range should be down here. Okay. Uh, cool, back to our old numbers again. So what I do now that I've detected that there is a polynomial uh, uh, or a nonlinear relationship that's best described by a polynomial form, what I'm going to do now is in all my future regressions, I'm going to include all three of these instead of just income like I did before. So I'm going to go ahead and move this one here kind of out of the way. And let's do another overall regression that includes all these and see what it's done to income. So data analysis, uh, regression, Y, are we still on P? Yep, that's purchase bike. G range though, this has changed. Let's include homeowner all the way to uh, not income because when we got rid of income, we want E through O there. Control shift down. Let's output 
Um, let's save our original one so we can compare it to it. Uh, so I'm going to put it all the way down here. Call it good. All right, so let's see what it's actually, how much this has truly helped. Um, so let's recall up here we had a 9%, 9.25% R squared. And let's take a look here at our p values by changing it to a number with a couple decimals, holding it. So I'm going to copy those so that we can compare them. Let's come all the way down here to our new regression model that includes all forms of income. And I'm going to paste these p-values out here. Uh, did I, oh yeah, uh, did I start on marital status? No, I didn't. So this one actually is the p-value of intercept. I should have lined them up here a little bit better. Income reduced, is that the one? Yeah, income is one that's 0 .000. So I change these. These actually belong down here. So these are our original p-values for everything. In our original model, we didn't have income squared and cubed. So those are missing there. But let's take a look at these now. Bold them, change them to a number. OK. Gender, not significant before, not significant now. Income previously was hugely significant. Now it's mildly significant. But look what happens to income squared and cubed. When we include them with everything else, it didn't do a whole lot for us. They're still not significant. So even though by itself income demonstrated a nonlinear relationship with purchase bike, when we put it in the overall model, it still doesn't help. So my conclusion from this is that I'm going to leave income the way it was originally and not include any polynomial terms um, to... Uh, there's no, the, the, in other words, the nonlinear relationship is not so bad or significant that I need to include any other terms to fix it in my model. So that's one variable passing the test. You'll need to do this when you're uh, completing your final project or, or in real life. You'll want to check this for every one of your numeric variables. Let's do one more scatter plot chart just so you can see some other types of uh, nonlinear uh, modifications. So this is unrelated to the spike buyer's problem we're solving, but I just want to do two more continuous variables like income and children because purchase bike was just a zero one and children has a few more values. So let's go ahead and select, uh, where are they here? Children, I'll grab, actually I'll grab income first, hold down control, grab children. Come on. There we go. Let's insert a scatter plot. And let's um, cut that thing, move it over here out of the way a bit. And let's go ahead and insert a trend line. Uh, linear, there we go. And let's format that trend line by displaying the equation. And remember, check this display R squared value on chart. Let's move this up here out of the way a bit so we can see it. All right, so our R squared here is 0 0.066. Let's go ahead and um, uh, label option. No, not label. I need to go click back on my trend line. That's what I want. So here we can do um, a logarithmic. Oh, well, no, we'd have some zero values. So I don't think that's going to. Oh, no, it's. Um, yeah, no, that worked because we don't have any x values in the in the x variable. So see, it the y had a zero, and in fact, I could have done this on income if as long as there were no zero incomes. So y can have zeros because the way uh, logarithmic transformation works is we take the natural log of the x variable here, not the y variable. And so because um, uh, it looks like, oh, here, it looks, my, so income is my x variable, and there were no values of zero for income, although there are values of zero for children. So that's why it works here. Uh, R squared has gone from 0 0.06. Let's, uh, now I've already forgotten. I think this is a little bit higher, though. Linear was 066. Logarithmic is 064. So this is worse. So linear is better. Let's go and take a look at polynomial. Uh, now this jumped up quite a bit with the squared term. 
and it will go up a bit more with the cubed, way more with the with the to the fourth. Not much of a change going up to the fifth or sixth, and that's as high as we can go. So what I would do is same thing we did before to test this. I would go ahead and include. Um, I would include, include income uh, squared, cubed, and quadrupled, if that's the term for it, and test all those out. Uh, let's uh, moving average and power will not apply to this type of data. This is more. This is for um, data over time, so we won't worry about those. Anyway, that's how you hand, handle the assumption of linear relationships and fixes for when you do have nonlinear relationships in your data.